In today's video, we're gonna be going over how to measure your rigging to see what length do you need for your stays. So when you're making new standing rigging, you have two choices. One is you can take your stay off and then stretch it out, measure it, and then remake it. But that's actually not a good idea because when you take it out of tension, it'll shrink just a little bit. You'll never get it as tight as it was when it was up on your mast. And then your measurements come out a little on the short side and then your rigging comes out a little on the short side. So it's always really, really important to measure it in place on the mast because there it's fully under tension. It's as straight as it can possibly be and you'll know exactly where you need to measure to. When it comes to measuring your rigging, there's two ways you can do it. You can use an actual tape measure and you actually measure and figure out what number length in whatever unit you're working with your rigging is. The second way, which is the way I use it, is a more relative term. So who cares if your rigging is 57 feet and seven and three eighths of an inch long? Who cares? Your rigging is the length from the mast hang to the chain plate. That's it. So what I like to do is I take a line and I run it from the top of the stay to the chain plate. So tang the chain plate and I tie it off. And then when I'm working and making the rigging, I have a line that I can run side by side next to the stay to get the length perfect. So the way I get my line up the mast without having to go up because I personally hate going up the mast. So I try to do it as little as possible. So what we're gonna do is actually make the entire thing and then go up once to put it on. We never go up to measure, we never go up for anything. This is the halyard to the stay that we're replacing. Now say you're working on your cap shroud and you don't have a halyard to your cap shroud. Well, you kind of do, you use your main halyard or your jib halyard. You use another halyard and you just make sure that your messenger line gets to the tang. It's all it's gotta do. So once it's at the tang, you know that is your measurement from tang to chain plate. So. What we're gonna do is we're gonna attach this guy. Now this is our staysail halyard and it's very uh, used is a nice way of putting it. So there's some chafe happening right at the block and that's actually really handy because when you have that chafe happening right at the block, that tells you that is where the block is right off the bat, like before you even do anything. So then you know the tang is just a little bit above that. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna tie the messenger line to the halyard just a little above the chafed area. So if we look here, this section right here, it's a, it's a little chewed up. So this is where it's chafed, which means that we're gonna tie our messenger line here with a little tail that sticks out. And it's important to have the tail that sticks out because you want that to go beyond the block because we're not measuring the length of the halyard. We're measuring the length of the stay that is above the halyard. So at this point, we have the messenger line that's tied to the halyard and it goes from the tip of it all the way down towards us and the reason i tie it twice is that gives it some rigidity so that this points up so that way when this goes up into the halyard block this guy keeps going and i can look from down below to make sure when it goes up level with the tang when it's in the tang we know that is our height and the other important reason to do this with the halyard is you can put tension on a halyard so that means that i can tie this off down here at the chain plate and crank on the halyard to get the line that's going to be running from the bottom up there nice and tight. So now the line is fed all the way up to the top. We're just gonna bring it up alongside the stay and measure it to the chain plate. So now we just tighten it up. So when we look up the mast, it lays parallel to the stay. So with the messenger line running parallel to the stay, we know this is the length of the stay. Now, if you're doing your shrouds where they run through spreaders, then all you have to do is just swing out the messenger line, get it hooked on the end of the spreader, and then there's your length for that. But the whole important point is this is our exact stays length. So then from this, we can do all our calculations back from there, and we have a perfectly recorded length of our stay. So no, I do not have the number of what 
unit our stay is. But it doesn't matter because in the end, the important part is that we have the correct length. Now holding a line and you know putting your thumb at a certain point, that's great. That marked it for right now. But what about later? Like when you let go or when you bring everything down? So what I do is I put a double constrictor knot at the point. Now I put it loosely because this is roughly where it's gonna go. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna tighten everything up, get this exactly to the middle of the chain plate hole. I'm gonna tighten this down. And this is a permanent knot, so I don't have to worry about it scooting around or moving or anything. So when I do full rig jobs, I actually use this one line and then in the tails, I'll put one, two, three, four, however many little knots in the line. And then I have recorded in a little book the cap shroud is four knots and the head stay is three knots and the forward lower is two knots and stuff like that. And that way I have written down, technically, sort of, it's recorded on this line, the exact length of every stay on a boat. Now here where I'm doing just one stay, I don't need to do any uh, little knots to help me remember which is which. But if you're doing a full rig job, that's a nice trick to keep everything sorted out. That way you can use the exact same messenger line for all of your rigging. So now I'm just gonna put this guy in position and then I can slide the stop, the double constrictor knot up or down on the line to get it exactly in the middle of the chain plate hole. And then I just tighten it down and it is permanent. Now the last thing to do is to pull your halyard back down because otherwise your halyard's stuck at the top of your mast and that sucks. So that is why it's really important to not only tie a good knot, but to tie two good knots. So when I tie the end of the messenger line to the halyard, I actually put two constrictor knots. Now they're single constrictor knots, that way I can remove them, but they're both really, really strong. So it's, it's doubly tied. The other thing that comes from tying it twice is you get some directional stability to it. So the same as with your mast, every spreader section, every point of contact to your spar gives it a little bit more stiffness and a little bit more strength. So by tying this rope, the messenger line to the halyard in two points, you gave it two points of contact. So that means that this tip that sticks out tends to stay sticking out in the direction you put it. So that way it points up into your tang as the halyard curves over the halyard block. So just a little trick there. Maddie's currently editing our episodes that we put out. So if you guys want to check out our adventures, be sure to check them out. Maddie works hard on those. So as far as the measurements itself, so I said that you don't actually have to worry about what is the length of the stay because you have your little piece of rope that's tied off and you know that that is your length. The problem is you can't go to the store and be like, I need this length of rope without actually giving them a number. So that's where you do have to find out what is your number at some point. But it's it's a plus or minus. You don't need to be like to the millimeter. You can just ask for an extra foot or a bunch of extra feet. So the important thing you need to do is figure out how much line you need total and then go from there. Our little measurements. This is how I do the measuring for a stay. You need to factor in a couple things. There's the length of the stay itself, and then there's the things that add length to it. So when the line wraps around the thimble, that takes up extra length. And the best way to find out how much length it actually takes is to take a thimble, wrap a line around it, and then measure that length of line. So for the thimbles I'm using, it consumes an extra 6.25 inches, so six and a quarter inches. And then you need to know how much do you need to bury back in for the proper splice. When you're working with Dyneema, you need to do 72 times the diameter in millimeters. So I'm working with nine millimeter Dyneema. So that comes out to be 648 millimeters that need to be buried, which is equivalent to 25 and a half inches. So a little over two feet for each splice. So you have your length. Now you add things to it. So X, and then you're going to be adding the berry distance, your thimbles, and then you're going to be subtracting things because at the bottom you're going to have stuff. So if you're going to have a dead eye and lashings, those go in there. I'm doing this with just a turnbuckle because... Why am I doing this with just a turnbuckle? That's what you wanted to do. <laughs> okay. So dead eyes 
are so forgiving at this phase when you're cutting it because you can cut it like a foot short or two feet short. It doesn't matter because you have the lashing that's going to take up the distance. When you're working with a turnbuckle, you have a set number of inches of throw of the turnbuckle. So fully open to fully closed with the turnbuckle I'm using is only five inches. So that means I have to be spot on because if I'm too short, the turnbuckle is not even going to reach. If I'm too long, the turnbuckle can't get enough tension. So you have to be like super accurate if you're using a turnbuckle. So that that's a thing. So turnbuckle and toggles that we're adding. So the turnbuckle and toggles all come out to be an additional 24 inches of length, which means that if we make our stay exactly the length we need it, it's gonna be 24 inches too long because then when we put our tensioning device, it doesn't fit. So that's why you need to then subtract that amount. So you have your X, which is your length of your stay, the whole thing, everything involved in it, and then you add your berry, you add your thimbles, then you're gonna subtract your toggles and you're gonna subtract your turnbuckles. Now toggles serve a couple purposes. One, they act as a universal joint and they break up the stay so that way as stuff flexes on it, the stay can move and it's not gonna snap things. So they're really important to have. And then the second huge, beautiful factor of a toggle is they add a length. Uh, the toggles we're using add two and a quarter inches. Some toggles, like smaller toggles are an inch and a half. But the important thing is if your stay is a little short, add some more toggles in there. If your stay is a little long, take some toggles out. So always plan to have a couple toggles in there. That way you can always take them out and uh, save yourself a lot of hassle and headache. So we're using two toggles. That way we can add or subtract two. And that gives us an additional uh, four and a half inches of play. So that means that our five inches of throw in the turnbuckle now becomes nine inches of throw. So a little, little bit of buffer there. So that is the calculations. Now we're going to go figure out the actual stay because you have your X amount of how much rope you need. The reason I like to do it on rope is because I can literally pull Dyneema stay next to the messenger line one by one, like next to each other. And I know exactly how much I need. Uh, I bought a bunch of extra line that way we can then cut from there now this is to make the absolute minimum where you have 72 times your diameter buried being how this is an important stay i'm bearing that as the minimum and then after that then i taper the rest so this is going to have a whole bunch buried when i did our other standing rigging the minimum two feet of berry i did between four to six feet of berry depending on which stay i was working with so that's going to add even more line that you need to get. So on to the actual measuring on the stay and then the cutting. And the cutting is a stressful part because you can't put it back. Now, yet another way of looking at how long does your stay need to be is to do the math again. So your minimum length for the Dyneema part is going to be in my situation where I'm using nine millimeter Dyneema and a turnbuckle with two toggles. That means that my minimum length will be X plus 40. Now the extra 40 inches come from wrapping around the thimbles and bearing again, including what you subtract from the toggles and the turnbuckle. So all that comes together to be that the minimum cut length for the stay, for the Dyneema will be 40 inches longer than the total length of the stay. Now the minimum stay length, so when you're actually working like where the stay runs that is Dyneema, and there are no toggles and no thimbles and no turnbuckles, just the Dyneema section is going to be 24 inches less than the uh, X factor, the X measurement, which is the length of your stay. So that means that you're gonna build everything and the Dyneema part is going to be 24 inches less than the total length because that bottom 24 inches is going to be taken up by the turnbuckle and toggles. Now, when you first set it up, there's going to be constructional stretch. So that means that when you build your stay, it's not gonna fit, it's gonna be way too short because when you do the splices, the weaves are gonna open up and then it doesn't, it has to stretch back out. So don't feel bad when you set up your first bit of rigging and it's like several feet too short. You just gotta put some tension on it and just pull it down and it'll stretch back out. So the most stressful part is always cutting because once you cut it that's your length you can't make it any longer and then you're done so what i'm going to do is i'm actually going to feed out 
one by one the Dyneema part with the messenger line to get the exact length that I need. And then from there we'll start planning, all right, this much is gonna be in thimbles, this much is gonna be in splice, and we'll take it from there. So when you're doing it, what you do is you pinch the messenger line and the Dyneema stay together. And then you release over here, let them pan out, but you keep them parallel. And you just keep running along just like that. And then you have a one-to-one. -one. There's no question or issue of miscalculation. None of that matters. And as the old saying goes, measure twice, cut once. That's what we're gonna do. So we're gonna measure this once, get a rough idea from where we are, and then measure it again, make sure we come out at the same spot. And when I can measure it twice and get the exact same marks, then I know I'm ready to cut and I don't cut before then. So now I'm gonna measure how much length we actually need for the actual stay. Like the whole thing, like the cut length, you could say. So to start, we need to know the minimum. So we need six and a quarter inches, and that's gonna be for the thimble. And then from there we need 25 and a half inches, and that's gonna be for the splice. So this is our absolute minimum distance. And the way I mark these things is not with a marker or anything like that because can't always find those little tiny dots because if you think about it, you put the dot here and then when you're looking at the line later, you're looking over here, you don't see it. And then I miss them and then I spend so much time trying to find them that I just put a pin in it. And then this I can see from a distance. And uh, be careful because if you're just running your hand quickly through it, you'll find it as well and that's gonna hurt, so don't do that. So I put a pin in it. So now I know that from this pin on down until I come to the constrictor knot that I put in this guy, that length, minus two feet, so 24 inches, is going to be the length of the stay. The rest of this is going to be buried back in. Now I have extra, because when I bought this, I bought with extra, that way I wouldn't be a little short, because you can always trim it off, you can't make it longer. If we have an appropriate amount of extra, I'm actually gonna bury that as well, that way we just have added security and just a stronger splice, because, I mean, yeah, it's wasting a little bit of line and you didn't really need to buy that extra line, but it doesn't hurt anything by adding it to the splice. It's just extra security. So here is our mark. Now, this is the total length of the stay, which means that I want to go from this point back two feet. And that'll be the mark where we're gonna put the next pin in and then all the other uh, thimble and splice distance, all that happens there. Okay, so this is the end of the stay. Now we're gonna add what we need for the thimble and for the splice. So from this pin mark, we're actually gonna go out 25 and a half inches because that's our berry. And then another six and a quarter because that's for the thimble. And then we'll just move the pin over to here. So this is our new minimum length for the stay. So with this amount of rope, what we have on this side, if we cut it right here, we could make the stay and have enough buried and everything, but that would be the bare minimum. Being how this is the stay that we use for a storm sail, minimum's not gonna cut it. I'm gonna go above and beyond, which if you've watched my other videos, you know, I have a little bit of a problem with going above and beyond. So the cut length of Dyneema that I bought and brought with us from the States to Spain to build the stay, I have an additional 10 feet and nine inches extra. Now I could cut it short and then just work from there, but instead I'm gonna bury those extra five feet on each side because why not? That just gives us extra berry and it'll be plenty. So I'm not gonna keep the whole extra five feet on each side, don't worry. But that just lets me have a very nice gradual taper. And a gradual taper is so important because if the taper is too quick or too abrupt, the fibers will actually be stressed as they pass over the, the end of the splice. And that's where it'll fail. So if you can have a nice gradual taper, everything just works so much better. So having five feet to kill, literally, lets me have a very slow gradual taper in the stay and not have to worry about having enough or not having enough or anything like that. So we're actually gonna keep it. So our, what we're gonna cut to make the stay is going to be zero. We're not cutting anything. We're just gonna make the stay with what we have. Now I must say, when you are 
if you're re-rigging your whole boat, it's best to buy the Dyneema by the spool. You buy the whole spool and then you have as much as you need and that is why you don't worry about how long is this day, how long is that day. It doesn't matter because the spool is 600 feet. So you just use it as you need it. When you run out, you get another spool. In this case where I'm doing just a single stay and just once and in a foreign country where I had to travel and carry it in my suitcase and raise a whole bunch of questions as to why I have so much rope with me. Yeah, it's good to measure and just buy what you need. So a really good safe rule of thumb is to plan whatever you need and then just double it because then you can always trim it back from there and just in case you mess up you have extra to patch it because there are ways that you can make the stay longer but they're not as it's best not to start off that way start off with the right length but if you ever need to make it longer you just do an end to end splice and then deal with it from there when looking at the stay you can see the splice comes in here and then it tapers and it goes from really thick so you can actually see the weave is even open there and then as we come up it starts getting narrower and narrower until it just goes back to its original size so somewhere in this long length the stay the, the splice is tapered and feathers out to nothing so the more important the splice the longer you want to have for the taper so for example the forward lower it doesn't really take much stress i did about a foot extra the cap shrouds i did about four feet extra so 10 feet nine inches extra is another way of saying 10 feet and not worrying about those nine inches. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna measure out five feet because that extra 10 feet equates to an extra five feet on each side of the splice. So this is now where the stay starts. You can think of it that way. So what I'm doing here is I'm going to come along and then where the splice is gonna happen, I'm gonna put a pin in it. And then where the other splice is gonna happen on the other side, I put a pin in there. And then the length in the middle is the stay. And then once that's done, then I can go inside where it's warmer and do all the splices in a lot more comfort than being out here on the deck. So you have those five feet. Now we're gonna go six inches and then 25 and a half. Okay, so that's the amount that we need for all the extra, the berry and the thimble. Now we go to the actual stay. Okay, so this is the pin that marks where the stay will start. So now we go from here and measure out. So parallel with the pin. Okay, there's the end, so right here. So now we're gonna go back 24 inches. So right here should be where the next pin goes. And the reason it's minus 24 is because that rope is the length of the total stay, not including what's taken up by not stay. So things that are like the turnbuckles and toggles and all those things aren't part of the Dyneema stay, but are part of the total stay. So that's why you need to take them back out because otherwise your stay is gonna be two feet too long. The parts past the pins should be within nine inches of each other because one side I just did five feet. So that means that this side should be an extra five feet, nine inches. So we're gonna double check that. So we set them pin to pin and they're pretty close. So this is a really good sign, but it doesn't mean that we're perfect. And when you do this a lot, you'll learn that if you think you're perfect at it, you're gonna screw up and it's gonna go really badly and be really expensive. So at this point, what I'm gonna do is I'm actually going to mount the line on the thimbles and just tie them with a seizing knot and then send them up the mast and just check and make sure that they are about two feet off the deck and two feet ahead of the chain plate. And that's gonna just make sure that we are correct in these measurements before we do anything irreversible. So now's the moment of truth. We wanna be within 24 inches of here. When I measure, I am spot on at 20. So that means we're four inches shy. But the reason we're four inches shy is because I ran this up the halyard and it's clipped into the end of the halyard. So you have all the way from the shackle of the halyard up to the block and then beyond that to the stay to the, where the tang is so this isn't really the best uh way to be uh, how's a nice way of putting it it's not the most accurate way this is more of a are you close or are you so far off so that's what this is checking and being how we come out at 20 instead of 24 that's a four inch difference 
that's pretty close. So if we're off by a little bit, we can just add toggles or something to, you know, bring it up if we end up being a wee bit too short. Uh, but it's better to be close than way off because now's the time to fix things. Like literally, this is just being held by a tiny knot. So if I need to make any adjustments, make it longer, shorter, I can do it with the knot. And all of this absolutely must be done before the weave is ever spread. The moment you go, well, I'm not gonna do it there. But on this one where it's tail, the moment you do that and you open it, that's it. Your measurements are all shot, like nothing's gonna measure right because it's now, it's, it's been shrunken by construction. That is where the constructional stretch comes from. When you open the weave like that, it then gets shorter. And when it gets shorter, now you can't really measure because you don't know how much, by what factor, all those things. It just, it messes up everything. So all of this has to be done with knots before any splicing happens. And then you have a pretty good idea. So a very safe way of thinking about it is the amount of constructional stretch you're going to happen is going to be equivalent to the amount of creep you're going to have. So yes, the act of opening this makes it shorter. And then when you feed this in, well now it can't really close down all the way because it had the Dyneema inside there. So it's kind of holding it open so it can't close back down and stretch back to where it was. So in that case, it's gonna be shorter. And now you're screwed because it's too short. But Dyneema goes through three phases in its life cycle. And phase one is just tons of creep. It just creeps every day. It's gonna be a little longer than it was yesterday. And it's really annoying because you'll set up your rigging, everything is perfect. You go eat lunch, you come back that afternoon, the rigging's all slack. It's horrible. Once it gets past phase one and into phase two, that's where your rigging is good. And that's where ours is and has been there for years, which is why we've been able to sail and not worry about our rigging. So in phase two, all the constructional stretch is out because that comes out right away. And all the creep during phase one is done. Now, all of that, you're going to get a little longer. So whatever got shrunken because the, the berry and the splice then comes out in that first initial phase of creep. So it's really easy to just think of it as not considering it as part of your calculations because in the end, the minuses are equivalent roughly to the pluses and then you're good to go. Now, all of this information only pertains to SK78. So I've been working with SK78 for years. I know it through and through. The type that you use for your standing rigging is not regular Amsteel or regular denim or anything like that. It's heat set SK78. And that's the one sold by New England Ropes as HSR STS, which is heat set and stretched and stronger than steel. And then you can also find it under the other name of Dynex Ducks. They're all the same stuff. It's all heat set SK78. Now that is completely different from DM20. And if you have a very keen eye for synthetic fibers and you noticed in the video that it looks like I'm not really using SK78 for this, you know, when I was measuring and putting the stay up the mast, you're correct. I'm working with DM20 in this video. It's my first time working with it, so I'm still gathering a lot of information on its properties. But SK78, I know through and through, and that's the one that you can pretty much account that your creep will be equivalent to any constructional stretch that you might get. The next step in this process is going to be splicing it, and we're going to go over that in the next video. And if you're wondering why am I inside a van, don't worry about it. It's fine. This is fine. Thanks so much for watching. Be sure to like, subscribe, and share this video with your friends. And if you'd like to follow our journey in real time on a map, receive postcards from our ports of call, and messages directly to the boat, you can go ahead and become a patron using the link in the description down below.